Greetings, this is the man who pretends to be Charles Starwood. But today I'm here as the author, Stanley Rice, of the book Scientifically Thinking, How to Liberate Your Mind, Solve the World's Problems, and Embrace the Beauty of Science. I want to tell you about something that is found in chapter 14, or would have been found in chapter 14 if I had known about it when the book went to press. And this is the chapter that says, trust us, we're scientists. Well, should you? Should you trust scientists just because we're scientists? Usually, but not necessarily always, and I'm going to give you an example today. Scientists do not accept things simply on authority, especially new concepts. We demand evidence, we demand reasoning, and it should come from more than one scientist. Now, um, after a while, after we've gotten enough evidence, we no longer keep demanding evidence, but even then we keep our eyes open in case new evidence does come along that makes us question our original concept. Well, today I'm wearing a lab coat, and I have a stethoscope, and I have a microscope. The function of the stethoscope is two different functions, actually. One of them is to be able to hear better. Okay. The other is to make me look like a doctor. The same thing with a microscope. It allows you to see small things a lot better, but it also makes anyone using a microscope look like a scientist, and that brings a certain amount of prestige with it. And see, I've got all three, the lab coat, the stethoscope, and the microscope. Am I cool or what? And so now you're gonna believe anything I tell you, right? Well, maybe not. Let me give you an example. I saw a video online recently where a man who at least said he was a doctor gave the message that there's a certain vegetable that everybody believes is healthy, but nobody should ever eat it because it disrupts your intestinal bacteria. And I instantly recognized this, or after a couple of minutes, as pseudoscience. How did I do that? There's five ways, I want to share them with you so that you can also be on the lookout for pseudoscience. The first is that he had just enough truth to make it credible. As a matter of fact, the big new thing in medical research today is the study of intestinal bacteria. Quite simply, for you to be healthy, they have to be happy. And so he said that, and he said, yeah, that's true, maybe I can believe him. Okay, that's the first thing. The second is, and he said, nobody should ever eat it. Now, there aren't very many statements in nutrition like that. There aren't very many things that you should never eat, maybe arsenic and cyanide, things like that. But um, for instance, even diabetics can eat a little bit of ice cream, it's just not very much. So when somebody says nobody should ever eat this, and people are different, so you can't say nobody should ever eat it. Some people can eat lots of ice cream. So automatically that made me think maybe it's pseudoscience. And the third way is that it was based on the claims of one doctor. He said, this is a secret that I have discovered. You wouldn't believe how hard I worked on this. I worked on it for years and years. And there were all these clips showing him walking into his office with his stethoscope and looking into a microscope. And he just told us how hard it was that he worked on this. Well, I think you should always be suspicious of somebody who says, I've got the secret, just me. So you have to get it from me. Usually what scientists do is they share this information with other scientists and they say, what do you think about this? And then they report it as being a consensus, even if it's just of a few scientists, to get it started, to give it its initial credibility. The fourth thing is, as you probably already guessed, he had a buildup so that by the time he might have gotten to his answer, we already were believing him. He had a stethoscope, he had a microscope, and he had a lamp. So basically the message of that, the number four message was, I've got a stethoscope and you don't, so you should believe me. The fifth thing was that he never mentioned what the vegetable was. Now maybe he did by the end, but after two minutes I stopped watching, because what he should have done scientifically was tell us what the vegetable is, give us some of the evidence. Maybe he wasn't going to tell us, even at the end he was gonna perhaps say, subscribe to my newsletter and I'll tell you. Now, he could have said, I'll tell you more if you subscribe to my newsletter, nothing wrong with that, but he didn't tell us at all, at least not while I was watching. So I stopped watching after two minutes. And true science is repeatable, and it's not based on just one scientist's assertion, it does not need any stunts for credibility. By the way, buy my book. I have a stethoscope, and you don't. This is the man who pretends to be Charles Darwin, Tally Ho, and I'm in.